heard of a, what's called a pyramid scam. We used to have those in America that may still be running around, I don't know. Pyramid scams where this guy up here would recruit salesmen who would recruit salesmen, we recruit salesmen, and they all make it sound like they're all going to get filthy rich, but really it's, it's the guy at the top. He's the one, it's, it's a pyramid scam because the guy at the top, at the capstone, he's the only one that's really going to make any money off this deal. Well, the Illuminati and their plans, they always work in levels, in layers. Um, and those who are down here may not necessarily know what's going on up here. Or even, they may not even be aware that there's even an up here. But they're taught to go in layers or levels or they're initiated by rituals of various kinds. And so if you want to know if there is something not right about the church you're going to or the denomination you're part of or the, or the youth meeting or the, or the empowerment meeting that your, your particular Christian group uh, has anything to do with, I would start listening if they start talking about levels. You need to come to a new level. You need to rise up. You need to go upward. When they start talking about levels of initiation and rituals that are performed, see, that's exactly how, how Freemasonry works. By, by the way, that's exactly how evolution works, too. Remember this idea of evolution is that man started out as a very, very low form. And through the process of major paradigm shifts, man was suddenly transformed into a higher being until now we are how we are now. And the idea is, is that we're being brought to a new level, a new consciousness, a new awakening. You, you listen to the words that are being out there. All new age terms floating around out there telling us that we're about ready to enter into a, a higher consciousness or a new level. We're, we're about to evolve again. And so it starts out with the killing of a president in front of hundreds, even thousands of people broadcast on the news. And then you have, uh, then you have a, 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 a religious compound burning up. And then you have um, a, a government building being destroyed. And then on camera, you have these buildings of September 11, 2001 coming down right in front of our very eyes. And we're being taken to different levels. Freemasons work in levels, and I found I found this uh, in a Masonic manual a few years ago. Here is a uh, a Masonic ritual called three times three times three, and I want you to notice there's a graphic here up on the up on the the upper portions uh, of this particular picture. These are Masons that are that are being initiated to a higher level, and you have this symbol of a, a three-headed snake coiled up into a symbol called the Triketra. Now the Triketra, this is interesting because I have examples right here. Here is the Triketra on the front of the New King James Version of the Bible. Okay? Now, the New King James Version is not the King James Version. It's different. The King James Version is the Bible of America, and it always has been up until recently. Religious denominations, churches, ministries all founded their beliefs upon the words that were in this book. Okay? But you hear the talk now. You hear people say, well, that, that King James, you know, that's old. You know, we, we, we need something better than that. So we give them the, uh, the next step with the little symbol on it. We give them the New King James. That, that is to get churches and pastors. The New King James Bible has one purpose. That is, if, if they don't want to go so far as to go right to the NIV or the Message Bible, this takes them one step away from the King James Bible. And so, you ask pastors, do you use the King James Bible? Well, I use the New King James. It's the same. No. It's not. Not when you take the word hell out of this Bible 22 times. It's not the same. So you see the steps that are being taken here. Marilyn Ferguson wrote a book called The Aquarian Conspiracy. See the symbol? It's the same one. She defines an outline. She was a New Ager. She defines an outline in, in this book. The steps... The progress, the levels that we're being taken on. And by, and by the way, she says there are new agers everywhere. There are new agers who are working that are in schools, governments, business. 
uh, secondary schools, uh, public universities, private universities, religious universities, seminaries, denominations, pulpits. She says, we have our people everywhere. You can't stop us. And while one works in one group, another works in one group, but really we're all working toward the same goal. And there's a conspiracy involved in it. They themselves admit it, that it's a spiritual awakening that they're bringing mankind to. And this symbol seems to be at the core of it. If you want more information, we have a video called Triple Helix. We'll actually tell you what that symbol represents. Let's get some terminology here. You hear a lot of uh, commentators, a lot of conspiracy people talk about the Illuminati. The Illuminati this, the Illuminati that. Let me sort of, let me sort of define what, what is my idea of who the Illuminati would be, would be. Number one, the Illuminati. Those who work behind the scenes who are illuminated to the secret plan. There, I, there are people, I really believe this, there are people on this earth right now who worship the dragon who worship Lucifer, who are, who are working toward his goals as spelled out in Isaiah chapter 14, who know that they are, who want to be that way. Those are the Illuminati. They know exactly what the plan is. They know what the secrets are. They know, they know what it is that they're doing. They're very, very evil men. Now, we may not be able to identify them. Some people say, oh, I have a list. Oh, I was in a room with them. We may not be able to identify them. But that's who they are. The spirits always have their guys. They always do. Number two, we have what I call initiates. Those working in various groups who are not given the truth of the plan. Now let me, let me illustrate it for you here. Remember, uh, there are new age organizations all over the country. And most of them are in California for whatever reason. Uh, new Age organizations that are reaching in to every place in society in this country and all over the world. Okay, I even saw the, I even saw marks of it in Kenya when I visited Kenya. Um, they're, they're everywhere. Now, if you were to ask most New Agers, and even witches for that matter, I, I have a, a, some books on witchcraft, and one of them uh, basically says, it's a myth that we worship Lucifer. We don't worship the devil that's silly let me let me let me help you out with this okay if you do not worship the god of this bible you're worshiping lucifer okay you, you can't have it you can't have it both ways you will hate the one and hold to the other and love the one and despise the other but you cannot serve two masters so if you're not serving the god of this bible you're in on the plan okay you're you're part of the you're part of the conspiracy. You just don't know it. See, the initiates don't really know. In um, Freemason, I have uh, Albert Pike's Morals and Dogma here. Okay, And he, he, he illustrates the 32 levels, levels, one, two, okay, going up. 32 levels of Freemasonry. And I've read most of this book. And he never really deliberately comes right out and says... Blah. This is what the secret is. This is what we're doing. This is who we're serving. He never comes right out and says it in here. He alludes to it. He talks about allegories and symbols. We'll see some of that in a little bit. But he never actually comes right out and says it. And he also says something interesting in here. That he says that if you're on the lower parts of Freemasonry, you don't get it. Okay? You, you don't know who it is that we're really serving and what it is that we're really doing. You don't. You'll never know. Okay? And I'll show you what he said here in a little bit. And so those are initiates. They're, they're working in organizations and groups. And they would probably get mad if you say, well, you're, you're a Lucifer worshiper. They would probably get upset with you because they don't think they are. But the truth is, if you're not born again, that's whose side you're on. And then we have the, the masses. We have the Illuminati. We have this core here. We have all the initiates working out. And then we have just basically everybody else. Those who are being manipulated by the plan. These are people walking up and down the street. People watching television. Eating popcorn at movies. Whatever it is. That's who they are. That's our three groups here. So when you read literature or things like that. Keep that in mind. And they use phrases. Marilyn Ferguson. I was reading through this. And I just started underlining phrases 
phrases that uh, she used in here. Uh, here it is, paradigm shift on page 61. Uh, transformation here. Homo novus here on page 58. Um, and other, other uh, phrases. The omega point and so on. Uh, she says in here, chromosomes are splitting to go forward with a new pattern of life. By the way, that's what that is all about. But anyway, they, they, they give you phrases. You've heard of things like paradigm shift. Now we have religious conferences called paradigm shift or shift or a great awakening or a new consciousness or a new paradigm or or here's here's one that you'll see all the time the new world order a new age new level next level higher level bank of america had an advertising campaign that featured that their slogan bank of america a higher standard in other words it was they were they were drawing your attention to what a standard is and a standard literally was a flag. Now I want you to notice their flag here. Okay, their symbol, their logo, Bank of America, higher level, a higher standard. Um, let's let's break this down. This is the language of symbolism here. What does this represent? Some would say, well, that's just an American flag. No, not really, because um, the stripes are going different directions. Do you see that? What we have here is a set of three numbers, an eleven, an eleven. And 11. That's the number 33. We'll talk about that here in a little bit. And you say, well, I think you're exaggerating. I think you're making too much of this. Let's look at what Albert Pike said in Morals and Dogma concerning the nature of symbols. And by the way, let me point this out to you. When you, when you get a King James Bible and you read it from Genesis to Revelation, it may take you a while, you will never ever notice a symbol for a verse. They'll just always be the words in that verse. God doesn't draw symbols in the Bible and say, I, I hope you can figure this out. He just writes it out plainly for us. The Bible says the prophet made it plain upon tables. He didn't use symbols. He didn't use mysterious things that we would never know what they mean. He used letters and words that you and I can read. Here's what Albert Pike said about symbols. He says, symbols have two meanings, the esoteric and the exoteric. The esoteric meaning was the true and original meaning, understood by only a few and closely guarded by them. The exoteric meaning was the invented or modified explanation intended for the many. There's the masses right there. The sacred mysteries, which are often mentioned in connection with many ancient religions, which were closely guarded by the initiate, concerned esoteric meanings in the religions of previous times. And then he says, Masonry, like all the religions, all the mysteries, hermeticism, and alchemy, conceals its secrets from all except the adepts and sages or the elect, and uses false explanations and misinterpretations of its symbols to mislead those who deserve only to be misled, to conceal the truth which it calls light from them, and to draw them away from it. Truth is not for those who are unworthy or unable to receive it or would pervert it. That's what Albert Pike says in Morals and Dogma. And so basically what he said was, Symbols always have two meanings. So, you see uh, on the front of the New King James Bible, a symbol called a triketra. Okay? Now, Thomas Nelson says this is a symbol for the Trinity. Now, the book of Acts says there cannot be any image of the Godhead graven by art and man's device. So, Thomas Nelson was not telling the truth about this. Pike said symbols have two meanings. The exoteric, the one that we tell you what it means, but it doesn't really mean that. And then it has the esoteric, which means secret. That means the meaning that we're not going to tell you what it means. And he says, if we tell you what this symbol means, the double-headed eagle on the front of this book, we're lying we're concealing it. We're, we're misleading you. We're not telling you that. How would you like to be part of an organization that you paid dues to that repeatedly didn't tell you the truth? They lied to you. They misled you because they don't feel like that you're of the highest level to receive it. Whereas in Bible Christianity... There are no levels of initiation in Christianity. Once you decide that you're going to believe the Bible and call upon the name of the Lord, you're saved. 
See how simple that was?